ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ವಿರಾಂತ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮಾಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೃಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣೀ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷಾಯ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯದೇಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಜಯೋ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರಂಚೈವಾನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಥೋ ಜಯಮುದ್ಧಿರೇತ್ ನಷ್ಟ ಪ್ರಾಯಶು ಅಭದ್ರೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಾಗವತ ಸೇವೆಯ ಭಗವತಿಯುತ್ತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭವತಿ ನೈಷ್ಟಿಕಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ವೀಕ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ದಿ prayers of devahuti right so with that um, so we are done with the third canto so now we are moving with the fourth canto so wherein we have dhruva maharaj prayers yeah how many of us here know about uh, dhruva maharaj anything we know about dhruva maharaj yeah a little bit prabhu ji he, he was asked by his uh, step mom to go and worship uh, go and uh, go into the forest and worship vishnu he wa- if he wants to win her the heart of his father and then he goes out in the forest because he wanted to um, win his father's heart and then he keeps reciting the lord's name and he and then he comes back and rule his kingdom <coughs> i know yeah thank you mata ji hari krishna so first uh, i'll give you the background so where does this chapter start with as usual right and then we'll actually continue with the prayers for the rest half of the class okay so this is dhruva maharaj okay so he is the son of king uttanapada okay and uttanapada's father is swayambhu manu okay you see the lineage and then swayambhu was manu is lord brahma okay clear right dhruva maharaj's father is uttanapada his grandfather is swayambhu manu and his great grandfather is brahma okay so what happens is um the king right king uttanapada actually has two wives okay so one named suniti the other named suruchi okay so suruti was the mother of dhruva maharaj okay and suruchi was the younger mother of dhruva maharaj okay and suruchi was beautiful okay hence and the king was more attracted towards her okay so he was more attracted towards suruchi and so for suniti right so he was not caring for her much okay and then she was the mother of dhruva maharaj okay and suruchi son was uttama okay suruchi had a son whose name was uttama okay <clears throat> so what happens is um, if we go a little bit um, backwards right so the children's rights usually 
say when there is a casual time, right? So like um, we also, right? Or any of our children are also, right? So whenever there is a casual time, right? They tend to play with the father, mother, right? And uh, so in that process, right? What happened is um, both were young children, right? So they wanted the father's attention. So they actually came and then they wanted to sit on the lap of the father, okay? So already Uttama was sitting and then, so Dhruva Maharaj also wanted to sit on the father's lap. So it's an affectionate thing, right? So which goes in, uh, so which goes, which happens in every household. So what happens is there, Suruchi actually was sitting besides and then she will not allow. She doesn't allow uh, Dhruva Maharaj to actually sit on the father's lap. Okay. And then she actually, because by then, right, uh, Dhruva Maharaj's age is five. Okay. So he's at a very tender age. And then, and by then, what happens is uh, she actually uh, tells very strong words. So, wherein Suruchi says that um, so you don't deserve to sit on this throne. Okay. And then she says that um, you don't deserve. And um, so she said that I'll not allow you to sit. And then she says that you're not qualified to actually sit on the on your father's lap. Okay. Uh, because, and then she gives the reason because you are not born out of my womb. Okay. So at the back end, if you see, right, Suruchi was hatching plans because she was thinking that if at all the king actually gains any attraction towards Dhruva Maharaj and he's attracted, right, then her son Uttama may not become the king. Okay. So it was at the backwards, right? If you look in, uh, she has that duality. So she thought that, okay, so if, uh, there shouldn't be right from the beginning itself, right? There shouldn't be any proper relationship between the king. And, and she, by then only, was focusing that her son should become the king. Okay. And then she says that, if at all, you want to desire to sit on your father's lap, right? First, you'll have to satisfy Narayana. And then, after many words, right? So, when you take the birth in my womb, right? Then you'll get uh, to sit on the your father's lap, okay? So, this is what she says. Um, so, until then, it's not possible. And then... Uh, she, sp she sp uh, spoke in such a way. And then what happens is, uh, these were very harsh words for a five-year-old, right? And then Dhruva Maharaj went crying to his mother, Sunniti. Okay. And then he says that, so look, this is the uh, scene which happened. And then uh, he was crying. And um, so he was shivering and all, right? Because he couldn't take... Because being a Kshatriya, right? So he couldn't take these words. And then Suniti also felt bad. Um, but so she said that um, after that, she started pacifying him, saying that, so, uh, my dear child, so don't actually uh, have any ill, uh, uh, say, relations or so don't think uh, ill of... Uh, your stepmother, okay. So though she has said these words, so don't get into all those things, okay. And then what she says is, whatever she said, right, whatever Suruchi advised, though it was in a harsh way, but that's correct, okay. So the only person or so whom you can reach is the Lord. She said the right words that, if at all you want to take birth in my womb, then you'll have to go and then uh, ask for Narayana. So she instructed that you should go to Narayana. 
so which is absolutely right and then she says that no one else can help you so it is only narayana who can help you so she gave it in a wrong way but that's the right thing to do okay so suniti advises a five year child see uh, the kind of uh, maturity and then uh, the way she, she is handling these things right and then she says that this is how your father got the kingdom right and then your uh, grandfather swayambhuva manu also right after praying and after doing austerities right so he got to rule the universe similarly your great grandfather so when he was born so he did so much of austerity and then he got the post so then he understood that he has to do all the creation and all right so she gives the information and then she says that you should live to the and then he asks dhruva maharaj asks where does the lord reside or where can i see the lord then the mother says that so you have to go and meditate in the forest okay and then she says that you should go right away and dhruva dhruva maharaj actually listens to her mother and then he starts right away so he doesn't look for any comfort because see he was in a palace okay so though he was not treated properly right but anyhow he was a princess right he had all those comforts okay but he left all all the things and then he started walking towards the forest okay and then he moved in uh, to the forest okay he was actually walking towards the forest and then what happens is in in the way right he was asking so where to go and all those things so looking at this right so narad muni right so we know that whenever there are any such situation right so narad muni who actually revolves around all the universes right um, so he took the notice of dhruva maharaj okay and then he goes to dhruva maharaj okay and then he says that uh, what happened he asks so then um, dhruva maharaj actually explains that this is the episode which happened and then uh, now i am going to the lord and then i will have to see him and then i'll ask benediction so narad muni said what will you ask then dhruva maharaj says that i'll ask him a bigger kingdom than his great grandfather okay so not his father's kingdom yeah so he he wanted bigger than his great grandfather and uh, so narad muni actually tells him that okay so uh, i think this is uh, not the right age right so he starts counseling him saying that so you are only 5 year old and then um, so to soothe the lord right so uh, there are severe penances severe austerities which he had to follow through right and then he had to live in a forest so everything is not uh, very pleasing right <clears throat> so he he tells and then so this is an age where you should play you do you should do sporting and all and then you should not get indulged into these things and then um, so don't take those words uh, so strongly it happens so he gives all these reasons okay and then he says that um, it's okay you can't do it so go to the palace and then stay there so what happens is uh, uh, dhruva maharaj is not ready to compromise okay he says that it's fine so whatever uh, uh, you have uh, whatever knowledge you have uh, shared right so this is all good but this is only 
this is only for the materialistic people and then it's not for me so who are materially entangled for them these instructions are fine but he says that he actually in a way he says that your instructions are good but i'm not going to obey and uh, no going back tell me how to go forward okay he asks now he asks he asks let me know how do i see the lord and then what is the process for it okay and then after listening and then seeing the determination of a five year old right um, so narad muni feels compassionate and then he starts instructing him okay he says what to do right how to do the penances in the forest how to meditate on the lord how to do ashtanga yoga because that was in satya yoga okay because satya yoga it's all tapasya right so he gave him all the instructions right and then he said and he even described the form of the lord because there were no pictures or nothing right dhruva maharaj actually has never seen the lord or nothing so how will he know whether he is the lord or what right so all these instructions narad muni actually loaded with loaded him with all these informations yeah and then he said that what to do right so every day right so so actually every month what to do how to do the yoga right and uh, all these instructions were given saying that uh, you have to take um, bath thrice a day right all these instructions he has given and then he says that you should go towards madhuvan okay so now uh, so there is long story okay there's a lot story but there are there is um, long verses i'm just cutting down because else we'll not be able to finish this so now uh, he goes in and then so penances are very the tapasya which he does right so they are very stringent yeah so i think uh, for a 5 year old right to actually listen to the instructions and follow through them right he followed as it is whatever narad muni has told and then he was blessed again by narad muni okay so it's the right somebody gets a blessing of narad muni right because he is a vaishnava devotee right and then if he blesses then what is that so but the dhruva maharaj actually goes into the forest all alone right he searches for a secluded place and then he starts its yoga ashtanga yoga and then what happens is he does severe penances yeah so during the first month right of his yoga practice he only eats fruits and berries every third day not every day yeah so every third day he used to eat the fruits and berries so for a five year old right if he ask don't read one time right it's difficult so live with a live about five year old right for us only right so we can't stay like that right so ekadashi itself we'll be waiting when when dwadashi will come and then when we'll have our uh, full plate yeah but you see he was eating only once he is eating only yeah fruits and berries every third day right that is first month he ate like that okay and in the second month right he ate only once every six days okay that what did he eat only dry grass and leaves yeah and in the third month he simply drank water once every nine days because he was completely in trance okay and then in the fourth day right dhruva maharaj actually mastered the ashtanga yoga yama niyama everything right dhyana pratyahara so we have eight right so he has actually 
mastered the breathing exercise and then he would only inhale air only after the 12th day so for 12 days he was not inhaling the air so he was able to control his air life air everything so in the 5th month still controlling his breathing right he concentrated his mind fully on the lord supreme person and then he started standing on one leg okay in the next month so this is in this month right in the sixth month dhruva maharaj became completely absorbed in trance right and then he suspended his breathing closed all his holes of his body and he identified lord vishnu in consciousness that when he stopped breathing right so he went into that stage and then so he was in that level of consciousness that when he stopped breathing the total universe breathing became choked choked okay so that was the level of um, meditation and then uh, the uh, penances which he did so the, at that time right so when he was doing like this right uh, even the leg on which he was standing right so due to his toes pressure right even the earth was actually uh, say floating up and down with that pressure and so now the demi gods got afraid so some, this is something unusual happening and then they go to lord vishnu and then they say that this is the situation and then lord vishnu says that yes there is an young child who is doing these penances and then i'll settle this case so then the lord appears okay so the lord appears before dhruva maharaj right so so dhruva maharaj uh, by seeing the lord right he falls he falls um uh, and uh, he does uh, a dandavat right he falls as a stick and then rest we will see so what happens so from there on he'll start the prayers okay shrimad bhagavatam okay but i've opened this earlier only that's okay this is chapter 9 so all these chapters right so the ones which went on right so all these things are nothing but uh, he leaves home right So these are the things where I have discussed all these things. Yeah. So here, so when the demigods were thus assured by the personality of Godhead, they were freed from all fears. Yeah. And offering their obeisances, they returned to their heavenly planets. Then the Lord, who is not different from Sahasrarishi incarnation got on the back of Garuda who carried him to the Madhuvana forest okay so this is the forest where lord dhruva was actually meditating right the form of the lord which was brilliant like lightning right and in which dhruva maharaj in his mature yogic process was fully absorbed in meditation all of a sudden disappeared thus dhruva was perturbed and his meditation broke but as soon as he opened his eyes he saw the personality of god had personally present just as he had been seeing the lord in his heart yeah. so here we'll see so when dhruva maharaj saw his lord just in front of him right he was greatly agitated and offered him obeisances and respect he fell flat before him like a rod and became absorbed in the love of god dhruva maharaj in ecstasy looked upon the lord as if he were drinking the lord with his eyes kissing the lotus feet and the lord with his mouth and embracing the lord with his arms so what happened is and pose that right because by then right dhruva dhruva maharaj didn't go to any school right so because he was a 5 year old right so he didn't have um, any vedic study or anything okay 
and then the, the other important thing is uh, i just missed in uh, narad muni actually instructs the secret mantra to dhuram dhru maharaj okay so he says that uh, you'll have to meditate on the lord using the mantra okay so which is nothing but om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and so that is the mantra which was being given to dhruva maharaj okay so he was chanting it continuously right so the problem was he was small right and then he didn't go through this all vedic uh, studies and all right so and then he didn't knew how to actually pray to the lord right but he was having intense desire and then his everything was choked up and then he didn't knew what to do now so the lord understood the situation okay and then he places the conch shell okay the lord places the conch shell on the head of uh, dhruva maharaj so with that right he gets all the vedic knowledge and then pours that he starts and then once that's placed right he actually loses all his material desire so until now right so he was having all the material desires right uh, so one material desire was that he wanted to have a bigger kingdom right so that thing vanished okay and then he got all the spiritual download once the lord touched with his function on his head although dhruva maharaj was a small boy he wanted to offer prayers to the supreme personality of godhead in suitable language but because he was inexperienced he could not adjust himself immediately the supreme personality of godhead being situated in everyone's heart could understand dhruva maharaj's awkward position out of his costless mercy he touched his conch shell to the forehead of dhruva maharaj who stood before him with folded hands yeah. every devotee wants to chant the transcendental qualities of the lord devotees are always interested in hearing about the lord's transcendental qualities and they are always eager to glorify these qualities okay but sometimes they feel inconvenienced by humbleness the personality of god had being situated in everyone's heart specifically gives a devotee intelligence to describe him this is therefore understood that when a devotee writes or speaks about the supreme personality of godhead his words are dictated by the lord from within okay so this is for the advanced devotees okay so it's not for us so we are just listening from our guru parampara and then uh, say we are just repeating it na yeah? but this doesn't happen to us yeah this is true for prabhupad's case right so because else who can write these many books right so uh, at the age of 70 right so he compiled so many books he written he wrote bhagavad gita bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrita and then so many books right so that's the thing and then he used to say also right uh, that so the lord dictates all these things and then he actually writes them This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 10th chapter to those who constantly engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So we know right So the Lord gives us the dadami buddhi yogam tan yena mam upayantite right so that's the verse which is being discussed here okay within dictates what to do next in a, in order to serve him when dhruva maharaj felt hesitant not knowing how to describe the lord for what want of sufficient experience the lord out of his costless mercy touched his conch shell to dhruva's forehead and he was transcendentally inspired okay so from here things change this transcendental inspiration is called brahma maya because when one is thus inspired the sound he produces exactly corresponds to the sound vibration of the vedas this is not the ordinary sound vibration of this material world therefore the sound vibration of hare krishna ma- mantra although presented in the 
ordinary alphabet should not be taken as mundane or material. So here on, we'll read a couple of verses. Yeah. Saveta Deva Pratipadya Pratipaditam Gir Giram Devim Parignata Paratma Niranya Tam Bhakti Bhavo Abhyagranat As Astavaram Parishrutar Parishru Taru Shravasam Dhruvakshiti. So, can we read? Yeah, we'll read this at least. Saha Dhruva Maharaj, why? Certainly, Tada, at that time, Eva, just Prativi Paditam, having attained Giram, speech, Daivam, transcendental, Parignata, understood. Paratma of the super soul, Nirnaya, the conclusion, Tam to the Lord, Bhakti Bhava, situated in the devotional service, Abha, Abhyagranath, offered prayers, as, as, Asatvaram, with any hasty conclusions, Parishruta, widely known, Urush Shravasam, whose fame, Dhruvakshiti, Dhruva, whose planet would not be annihilated. At the time, Dhruva Maharaj became perfectly aware of the Vedic conclusion and understood the absolute truth and his relationship with all living entities in accordance with the line of devotional service to the Supreme Lord, whose fame is widespread. Dhruva, who in the future would receive a planet which would never be annihilated, even during the time of dissolution, offered his deliberate and conclusive prayers. Hare Krishna Mataji. Uh, can you read this, Milinda Mataji? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. There are many important items to be considered in this verse. First of all, the relationship between the absolute truth and the relative material and spiritual energies is here understood by a student who has complete knowledge of the Vedic literature. Dhruv Maharaj never went to any school or academic teacher to learn the Vedic conclusion, but because of his devotional service to the Lord, as soon as the Lord appeared and touched his forehead with his conch shell, automatically the entire Vedic conclusion was revealed to him. That is the process of understanding Vedic literature. One cannot understand it simply by academic learning. The Vedas indicate that only to one who has unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord, as well as in the spiritual master, is a Vedic conclusion revealed. The example of Dhruva Maharaj is that he engaged himself in devotional service to the Lord according to the order of his spiritual master Narad Muni. As a result of his rendering such devotional service with great determination and austerity, the personality of God had personally manifested himself before him. Dhruva was only a child. He wanted to offer nice prayers to the Lord, but because he lacked sufficient knowledge, he hesitated. But by the mercy of the Lord, as soon as the Lord's counsel touched his forehead, he became completely aware of the Vedic conclusion. That conclusion is based on proper understanding of the difference between Jeev and Paramatma, the individual soul and the super soul. The individual soul is forever a servant of the super soul, and therefore his relationship with the super soul is to offer service. That is called as Bhakti Yoga or Bhakti Bhava. Dhruva Maharaj offered his prayers to the Lord, not in the way of the impersonalist philosophers, but as a devotee. Therefore, it is clearly said here, Bhakti Bhava. The only prayers worth offering are those offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose reputation is spread far and wide. Dhruva Maharaj wanted to have the kingdom of his father, but his father refused even to allow him to get on his lap. In order to fulfill his desire, the Lord had already created a planet known as the Polestar, Dhruvaloka, 
which was never to be annihilated even at the time of the dissolution of the universe dhruva maharaj attained this perfection not by acting hastily but by patiently executing the order of his spiritual master and therefore he became so successful that he saw the lord face to face now he was further enabled by the causeless mercy of the lord to offer fitting prayers to the lord to glorify or offer prayers unto the supreme one needs the lord's mercy one cannot write to glorify the lord unless one is endowed with his causeless mercy hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna mata ji so here uh, we touch base those things friends because he was not uh, by because by the age right he didn't have any vedic knowledge and all so the lord gave him all these things and then he understood the difference between jiva and parmatma okay and the other thing which we we'll have to learn here is dhruva maharaj actually so if we look right in any of this um, uh prayers which we have been going through right so everyone is a surrendered soul to a spiritual master okay it's not that somebody had a dream in the night and then morning he said that uh, i have seen the lord it's not in that way so everyone has his own spiritual master right and then they are surrendering to him and you see dhruva maharaj has followed whatever was being told by narad muni so it is it's very impossible right so for a 5 year old to actually understand that and then do it so meticulously right and then he didn't have any paper book to write all the instructions which were being given by narad muni he just heard it and then he did he could remember it and then if you look at our situation now right we don't remember the phone number itself right except the close one right either mother father or spouse that's it other than that we don't remember and if anyone tells two liners or three liners right so we say can you write it yes if it is important then we'll ask to write it else we'll forget gone but you see at that time so and then he did those penances and then he waited uh, to see the lord but his penances are different in a different world right and uh, you see dhruv maharaj could achieve in 6 months in 6 months he had he was determined and then he could see the lord so that's the way if anyone is determined and then anyone who follows the guru shastra right it is possible if at all we have that determination yeah it's something similar to the story which uh, we all might have heard right so there was a cliff okay and then it was pitch dark in the night okay so it's like uh, no moon day right and uh, from the cliff right a man fell down okay and then luckily he caught hold of a branch on the on one hand he could uh, get the he got hold of the branch and then he was actually hanging okay and then he prayed desperately to the lord saying that oh you will have to save me and then uh, so the desperation was more and then he said that uh, so he was hanging right and then the lord also appeared okay then he says that lord help me uh, so i am in this situation so i'll have to get on to the ground and then move on uh, i'm stuck in this midnight nobody is there to help he screamed a lot but nobody came in now it was midnight who there who is there so the lord said that leave the hands okay then the man says that we all intelligent persons right so he says that what are you talking if i leave this i will die huh? So this is the only 
insurance which I have and then you're asking me to leave this. And then the Lord disappeared. It's hard luck what we can do. So he was hanging. So slowly, when light came in, right, he could see that the distance between his feet and the land was two feet or so. So he did believe the Lord. So the Lord said that you leave your hands. Right? So if he had have left, right, he would have fallen on the ground and then you would have walked away in the night. But he was standing all the night. So that's the way our, our dependency is there on the God. Okay, so we pray, we do everything, but we have our own agenda. So we are not fully dependent. Yeah. So the day we are fully dependent, right? So whatever the Lord says, right, we follow. And then that's that's the day we'll get his mercy. Yeah. Anyhow. So we'll move forward. Dhruma said, My dear Lord, you are all powerful. After entering within me, you have enlivened all my sleeping senses, my hands, legs, ears, touch, sensation, life force, and especially my power of speech. Let me offer my respectful obeisances onto you. Okay. So, yeah, I think uh, we'll read first to Paras. Lakshmi Prabhu, can you read this? Uh. Uh, yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Uh, Dhruva Maharaja could understand the, very easily the difference between his condition before the before and after attaining spiritual realization and seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. He could understand that his life force and activities had, seen, had been sleeping. Unless uh, one comes to the spiritual platform, his body, bodily limbs, mind and other faces the facilities within the body are understood to be sleeping. Unless one is spiritually situated, all his activities are taken as a dead man's activities or ghostly activities. Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakura has composed a song in which he addressed... Bhakti Vinoda. Uh, uh, Bhakti, sorry. Sri Bhakti Vinoda Thakura has composed a song in which he addresses himself. O living entity... Get up. Uh, how long shall you sleep on the lap of Maya? Now, now you have the opportunity of possessing a human form of body. Now try to get up and realize yourself. The Vedas also declare, get up, get up. You have the opportunity, the boon of the human form of life. Now realize yourself. Uh, these are the Vedic injunctions. Dhruva Maharaja actually experienced that upon enlighten, enlightenment of his senses on the spiritual platform, he could understand the essence of Vedic instruction. That the Supreme Godhead is the Supreme Person. He is not impersonal. Dhruva Maharaja could immediately understand this fact. He was aware that for a very long time, he was practically... Can you scroll up to... Yeah. Person. Dhruva Maharaja could uh, immediately understand this fact. He was aware that for a lo very long time he was practically sleeping and he felt the Im impetus to glory the Lord according to the Vedic, Vedic conclusion. A mundane person cannot offer any prayer or glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he has no realization of Vedic conclusion. Therefore, when Dhruva Maharaja found this difference within himself, he could immediately understand that it was because of the costless mercy of the Lord. He offered obeisances to the Lord with great respect and reverence, completely understand, understanding that the Lord's favor was upon him. The spiritual enlivenment of Dhruva Maharaja, Dhruva Maharaja's senses, and mind was due to the action of the internal potency of the Lord. 
in this verse uh, therefore the word svadamna means by spiritual energy spiritual en enlightenment is possible by the mercy of the spiritual energy of the lord the chanting of hari krishna mahamantra hari krishna mantra is first addressed to the spiritual energy of the lord hare this spiritual energy acts when a living entity fully surrenders and accepts his position as a as an eternal servitor uh, when a person uh, places himself at at the disposal or order of this supreme lord the lord called uh, seven mukta seven mukha yes seven mukha at seven mukha at that time the spiritual energy gradually reveals the lord to him uh without revelation uh, by the spiritual energy one is unable to offer prayer glorifying the lord any amount of uh, philosophical speculations speculation or poetic expression by mundane person is still considered to be the action and reaction of the material energy uh, when one is actually enlivened by the spiritual energy all the senses become purified and he engages only in the service of the lord at that time his hands legs ear ears tongue mind genitals everything engage in the service of the lord such an enlightenment devotee no longer has any material activities nor has he any interest in being materially engaged this process of purifying the senses and engaging the engaging them in the service of the lord is known as bhakti or devotional service in the beginning the senses are engaged senses are engaged by the direction of the spiritual master and shastra and after realization when same senses are purified the engagement continues uh, this uh, the difference is that in the beginning the senses are engaged in a mechanical way but after realization they are engaged in spiritual understanding hare krishna prabhu hare krishna thank you prabhu so it was a long part part as i thought to break up but um, so okay so you continued so here right uh, so what happens is um, after the conch shell was touched right dumaraj feels the difference the way he was looking the world right so the outlook has changed so before the blessings of the lord and after right he could feel the difference and then he says that you see right so everything is enlivened so until then right um, so he didn't have that spiritual spark right once the spiritual spark comes in right so you, you actually look everything in a different way right so that's what it's been told here right even um, so this particular uh, reference which uh, propat gives in right so this is uh, the song composed by bhakti vinod thakur right jeev jago so you might have heard it right? जीव जागो जीव जागो गोरा चंद बोले पोथा निद्रा जाओ मायर पिशाचे खोले सो यू आर स्लीपिंग इन द लैप ऑफ माया सो सो द सॉन्ग एक्चुअली सेज दैट गौरा चंद इज नथिंग बट गौरंग लॉर्ड चैतन्य इज सेइंग दैट वेक अप सोल्स वेक अप हाउ मच विल यू स्लीप इन द लैप ऑफ माया राइट सो दैट्स अ वेरी गुड सॉन्ग सो यू कैन uh read through right so when in your leisure yeah so that is what so with that right so he had that opportunity and then even so that's the opportunity which we should use in right so so the dormant love for the godhead which we have in ourselves right so we'll have to awaken them okay so and then that can be done through following the guru and shastra right so for us our dharma is to chant hare krishna maha mantra right and then so when a person places himself at the disposal of the order of the supreme lord right so this should be our desire so that we are always sevan mukha right so it's not that we start taking sevas from everyone right so whatever position we are in right so we as well have to be dasanu das right so that's what chaitanya mahaprabhu also told right so when somebody asked 
then he said that I am Dasanudas. Yeah? Dasanudasanudas. Okay. So that should be our way. So if you want to spiritually grow, right? So we should always be the uh, Das, right? So we should not actually take the role of lauding. Okay. Once we do that, then things are gone. So things will move in the other direction. So, and the other thing is, this is nothing but in the Bhagavad Gita also we have learned, right? Dhira, right? Um, so, and then in the second chapter also there is another word, right? So what? Sita Pragya, right? So all these things are what? So it's nothing but all your senses, right? So all your senses are engaged only in the service of the Lord. So there is nothing which you can see or talk all your senses are used for the service of the Lord. So in that way, if we do and engage our senses, then we'll actually get go to the Lord and then we'll get out of this cycle of birth, age old disease. Yeah? And then that is the actual bhakti. So, but that's certain um, elevated stage. But initially, right, everything is mechanical. Yeah. So unless everything is purified, right? Uh, so we can't engage our senses. So my my Lord, you are the supreme one, but by your different energies, you appear differently in the spiritual and material worlds. You create the total energy of the material world by your external potency. And after creation, you enter within the material world as super soul. You are the supreme person and through the temporary modes of material nature, you can create varieties of manifestation. Just as fire entering into the wood of different shape burns brilliantly in different varieties. So now he's saying that the Lord is the source of energy. So, Oh, my master, Lord Brahma is fully surrendered unto you. In the beginning, you have given... You gave him knowledge and thus he could see and understand the entire universe. Just as a person awakens from sleep and visualizes his immediate duties, you are the only shelter of all persons who desire liberation and you are the friend of all who are distressed. How therefore can a learned person who has perfect knowledge ever forget you? So this is what he's actually addressing the Lord Guru Maharaj is actually addressing the Lord that you are the one who has given the Vedic knowledge to everyone and then you are the source of shelter right and then here he says that this is uh, Artha Bandhu which means friend of the distress right so this is what happened right for uh, Dhruva Maharaj also, right? So this is the thing, right? Um, so we know, right, uh, from Bhagavad Gita, so who are the four kinds of people who actually go to the Lord? So there are four kinds of pious people, right, who actually go to the Lord. So anyone remembers that shloka from Bhagavad Gita? No. Chatur Vida Bhajantema Jana Sukrutuna Arjana Artho Jigyasur Artharti Gyanicha Bharat Arshaba. So there we have four kinds of people, right? So one who is distressed, right? One who wants to desire for wealth, and then one who is inquisitive, right? And then who are actually searching for the knowledge, right? So these are the people who actually go to the Lord. So everyone is like that only. So we also go to the... Initially, everyone goes to the Lord with some some of these categories only. In either of these categories will be there. Okay. And so most of us are like during the distress, what to do and what not to do, right? So in that we fall and then few are there in the category of uh, ganis who want who has jigyasus right so who want to understand 
so everyone before entering to the devotional service right everyone comes in this four categories and then they change themselves into a devotee they get the devotional service persons who worship you simply for the sense gratification of this bag of skin are certainly influenced by your illusory energy this is maya okay so we all know right our whole body is of what 108 rupees that's it it's all made of chemicals i think uh, there was some scientist who said that um, all the chemicals of our body cost only 2 dollars or so by then so which is not which is nothing but 108 rupees or so the valuation of our body okay in spite of having you who are like a desire tree and are the cause of liberation from birth and death foolish person such as me desire benedictions from you for sense gratification so the lord is kalpataru there might be a word here yeah kalpakatarum who is like the desire tree so which is available even for those who live in the hellish conditions right so these benedictions and all are for lower class people and then he says that so we should have ask something bigger which is devotional service yeah so he is actually feeling bad now okay my lord the transcendental bliss derived from meditating upon your lotus feet or hearing about your glories from pure devotees is so unlimited that it is far beyond the stage of brahmanda where where in one thinks himself merged in the impersonal brahman as one with the supreme since brahmanda is also defeated by the transcendental bliss derived from devotional service then what to speak of temporary blissfulness of elevating oneself to the heavenly planet so he's saying that even going to the swarga higher planets all these things are rubbish yeah so the bliss of seeing the lord is something different so which is experiencing and then he's actually telling us through these shlokas which is ended by separating sword of time right but as time passes by right so in bhuloka 100 years and higher planets some thousand years even upper few more 100000 years but at the end again the cycle goes back so he says that oh unlimited dhruva maharaj continued oh unlimited lord kindly bless me so that i may associate with great devotees who engage in transcendental loving service constantly as the waves of river constantly flow so he is asking for the association of the devotees such transcendental devotees are completely situated in an uncontaminated state of life by the process of devotional service i shall surely be able to cross the nascent ocean of material existence which is filled with the waves of blazing fire like dangers so he is asking to so give me the process of devotional service right so he is giving he is asking to give me the strength so that i can actually cross the waves the ocean of material existence it will be very easy for me for i am becoming mad to hear about your transcendental qualities past times which are eternally existent so now he has shifted so now dhumaras doesn't need a bigger kingdom than his father okay so oh lord you have a lotus navel if a person happens to associate with a devotee whose heart always hankers after your lotus feet seeking always their fragrance he is never attached to the material body or in a bodily relationship to offspring friends home wealth and wife which are very very dear to materialistic persons indeed he does not care for them so this is what it happens but this all happens at the higher stage yeah so this is also something he tells
my dear lord by your unbroken transcendent and glance you are the supreme witness of all stages of intellectual activities you are eternally liberated so he is giving the so until now he says that you are the one who created the universe he is glorifying the lord right and then he is saying that so we have material contaminations right and then he moves on he says that uh, he need the devotee association right so and in between them he can move right and then he wants to hear more about the lord's glories right you are eternally liberated your existence is situated in pure goodness and you are existent in the super soul without change you are the original personality of godhead full with six opulences so he is again glorifying the lord and you are eternally the master of three modes of material nature thus you are always different from the ordinary living entities as lord vishnu you maintain all the efforts of entire universe and yet you stand aloof from the enjoyer so this is devi aisha gunamaya right so here the lord says right so the whole uh, material creation so the three gunas right so they are part of his external energy right and then they actually work as per his instructions yeah so this this is the last one yeah my dear my lord oh supreme lord you are the supreme personified form of all benediction therefore for one who abides in your devotional service with no further desires worshiping your lotus feet is better than becoming king and lording it over a kingdom that is the benediction of worshiping your lotus feet the ignorant devotee is like me you are the costless merciful maintainer okay so the lord is the costless merciful maintainer just like a cow who takes care of the newly born calf by supplying milk and giving it protection from attack so lord is so merciful so he's taking care of us like a calf but we are ignoring him right so after this right um, so the lord also actually speaks to dhruva maharaj right and then dhruva maharaj says that i came um, uh, so my desires were like a glass okay and then uh, so by looking at the lord right so he says that you have i asked for glass and then you have given me diamond okay so and then the lord says that uh, so he is uh, happy and then he says that the lord gives him the material opulences also he says that uh, you will be the king after your father passes away and then you will be ruling for 36000 years okay the whole universe and then uh, and uh, his body will never become old yeah and he'll actually uh whenever he leave the body right so he'll go to the dhruva loka and then he'll be the there so the lok that particular star is called as pole star right and then that uh, will not get annihilated any time right so it is like the uh, vishnu dham only so wherein so it is his that is dham only and then she, he'll be that planet will belong to him okay so that's called dhruva loka and uh, during the pralaya also right so dhruva loka will never get submerged yeah? so that benediction happens and then uh, the lord uh, the, the, the disappears dhruva maharaj goes back to his kingdom so uh now uttana pada also feels very bad he is ashamed of what he has done so his brother uh his step mother his mother everyone will come to receive him right and um, so dhruva maharaj actually first uh pays obeisances to his father and then he pays obeisances to both his mothers right suruchi and suniti so he does not ignore suruchi yeah 
and then the story continues but uh, i think for this class this is enough hare krishna anything you want to ask uh, related to this topic today prabhu ji and mata ji hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu ji good uh at what state does he gain the dhruva loka when after, we call after after that two, two star yes. yeah so he rules after this what happens is prabhu he rules for 36000 years okay and then in between what happens is um, his brother right king uttanapada uh, actually makes him um, the king and then he he goes away so he goes away for his spiritual practice right so that was the usual practice which used to happen right and then in between what will happen is uh, his brother uttama right so he actually will be killed by the yakshas and uh, dhruva maharaj actually gets angry right and then he goes and then fights with them he goes alone and then he was about to kill the whole dynasty of yakshas so then manu comes in his and then he instructs again so to stop this yeah and uh, again um, he actually uh, meditates and then um, he actually gives his kingdom to his son and then uh, he takes his journey towards devotional service and um, and then the vishnu dutas come in and uh, to take him right so at that time also he'll follow his rituals and then he goes back with the vishnu Dut- dutas and then at that time he asks that where is my mother and then um, the vishnu duta says that your mother is also there she is also accompanying with you that happens at the later point prabhu hari krishna prabhu so this is all uh, if you read right so you'll get to know so i just cut short because uh, this will take um, it's all a long uh, very long very long <laughs> it's all uh, maybe a week's time then yes. we can actually justify this but uh, in for this class Yeah. <laughs> Overall, the, these are the I gave you just an highlight. Thank you, yeah. Prabhuji. Me, yeah, Prabhuji, I have one one more question regarding this. Huh? Just like uh, um, other demigods have their own demi, uh, the demigods have their planets. So Dhruv Maharaj also has his planet, but yes, uh, he is not considered uh, a demigod, right? No, he is still a devotee of the Lord. Okay, and there are no residents in Dhruv planet. So there, I don't know. it's there. Okay, <laughs> but how to reach there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have any mechanical means. So possibly. Yeah, because it's uh, they say that you whichever demigod you pray to, you go to that planet. Yeah, but nobody prays to Dhruv Maharaj. So yeah, I was. So maybe we'll have to, we can meditate or, so depending upon. uh how much meditation we have done right so maybe we can go to that loka also okay hari krishna prabhu hari krishna as one more question prabhu ji ah. um 